We're all about points today. Golden State scores 147 of them. Can a team hit 200? Joel Embiid had a 25-point quarter and still loses. And not to put too fine a point on this, but we're having an all-star game? What? Hey, I'm Tass Mellis, and this is what you need to know in the NBA for Friday, February 5th. Golden State beat Dallas 147-116. to The game was offensive, and so was the defense. Paint the picture, the Warriors had nine guys, none taller than 6'7", and their center was only 6'6", and Draymond Green. They had a bunch of injuries. Now, the Mavs are starting a 7-3 guy in Kristaps Porzingis, but he's not your traditional big guy. So when the Warriors were ready to run and cut for 48 minutes, the Mavs, they didn't keep up on the defensive end. I was close at half. It was 76 to 74, but the Warriors beat the Mavs by 33 in the second half. And they were led by Kelly Oubre, a career high 40 for him. He's famously been the only high volume three point shooter who's worse than Luka Doncic on the other side this season. Not shooting a good percentage, but he hit seven of them this game. He was hot because the Warriors just had something flowing with this Nelly ball movement that they had going on. Ubre was 14 of 21 from the floor. A lot set up by Draymond Green, who had 15 assists from the center spot. Steph Curry only had to score 28. Him and Draymond Green sat in the fourth quarter of a game where the two teams hit a combined 42 threes. My goodness, that's the second most made threes ever in a basketball game. Let's get back to Kristaps Porzingis for a second. He had a good night shooting in this one. But there's an underlying issue here going on with the Dallas Mavericks. Nick Angstad tweeted a clip from the night before when Kristaps Porzingis wasn't in the game late against the Atlanta Hawks. Kristaps Porzingis was on the sideline, angry, furious. He hit something off an advertisement table that went towards the Mavs coaches. The Mavs coaches had to duck. And they said, what the heck was that? Well, it's Kristaps being mad that he's not being inserted late in games. And it's because he struggles defensively. Rick Carlisle has a heck of a conundrum. How do you balance that? You play him at the five. Well, teams are just going to pick and roll him to death. You play him at the four. Maybe you're a little too slow. Chris Porzingis has been very vocal about wanting to play. But can you keep him on the floor? He wants to be a max guy. That's something to watch for the Mavs going forward. Can they be great with him at the five? I imagine he's going to play the four to start and play more of the five to end games. But... There's something brewing there. Luca, alongside Kristaps, had 27 in the loss. That was a blowout in the end. Kristaps didn't even have to touch the floor late. Either did Luca, because this one was a spanker. I wanted to get to a question that somebody emailed in to No Dunks this week. They asked, can a team score 200 points? And watching the Golden State Warriors, I thought, wow, is this possible? I looked it up. 1983, the highest scoring game ever It was 186-184 between Detroit and Denver, and only two three-pointers were hit. But it was a triple overtime game. So you must think, oh, of course someone's going to score 200. It's going to take a special night, but I agree it'll happen in overtime games. It won't happen in a regulation game. The math doesn't check out. That's just too many three balls in regulation. But it could happen. We need a few OTs, but I think it'll happen one day. There will be a special night when it does happen. Joel Embiid had a special night for the Philadelphia 76ers against the Portland Trail Blazers, and he lost. The Blazers were missing Damian Lillard and C.J. McCollum. In the first half, Joel Embiid went down with an injury, but he returned to score 25 points in the second quarter. He had 25 of Philly's 29 points. It's amazing to watch Joel Embiid right now. He had 31 first-half points on Ennis Cantor primarily, who didn't want to get physical with him, so he gave him space in the mid-range. And Joel Embiid is firing away from the mid-range at a crazy clip. And it's wild to watch a seven-footer put it on the floor, cross over, rise up, and hit, and have that balance and that footwork that he has right now. They kept going to him. They kept going to him. They didn't have Ben Simmons in this one, who was out because of calf tightness. A lot of calf and quad problems happening in the NBA this season. And they missed Ben Simmons, both defense and and playmaking. Joel Embiid had to do too much. So in the third quarter, their D struggled and their offensive side of the ball struggled as well. 40 to 19 for Portland in that third quarter. Everyone's scoring for them. Gary Trent led all scorers with 24 points. But with the way Philly was playing defense, Gary Trent Sr. probably could have had 18 out there as well. Embiid finished with 37 points. 
Moving to Utah and Atlanta. Trey Young out because of a right calf contusion. See? Calf problems. Atlanta struggles when Trey is out. We talked about it the night before. It's the same thing that happened last season. And that's what they brought in all sorts of reinforcements for this year. Rajon Rondo was one of them. He started in Trey's place, but he was held scoreless in this one. And guards that could have helped, that they got in the uh, the offseason, Bogdan Bogdanovich, Chris Dunn, they were both out. The Hawks had 37 first half points against a good Jazz defense. And it just went downhill from there. Will Rajon Rondo cash in on his $750,000 playoff bonus? I love talking about that because it seems like such a huge number for a playoff bonus. The Utah Jazz have won 13 of their last 14 games. Moving over to Rockets and Grizzlies. Two teams that have good stories to start this season. The Grizzlies overcame John Morant's early season injury. Really impressive stuff. So Taylor Jenkins should be a coach of the year candidate. Well, on the Rockets side, they're a good story in the post-Harden era. They're the redeem team for me. And yeah, I stole that from USA Basketball. That's okay. John Wall, Victor Oladipo, DeMarcus Cousins, and Christian Wood all have things to prove this season. They're doing it together. And in this one against the Grizzlies... They shot the three really well together. John Wall hit four threes. Yes, John Wall, do your thing. Christian Wood hit three of them as well. But in the third quarter, Christian Wood turned his ankle. He stood at the free throw line ready to shoot his free throws. He's standing there in pain, obviously. But his teammates said, just get off the floor. You are obviously in pain. Just just leave. So he kind of walked off under his own power. Mostly did. He was putting some weight on that. ESPN's Tim McMahon reports that the Rockets believe Christian Wood could miss extended time. We'll find out on Friday after an MRI. Unfortunate news for Christian Wood. It's the same ankle that forced him to miss three games earlier this season. And Christian Wood has been thriving. Getting paid this year for the first time after being released by two different teams in the last two years. Then the Pistons, where he played really well with, uh, gave him to the Houston Rockets in a sign-in trade. And here we are, 22 points and 10 rebounds for Christian Wood this year. Hopefully, he's all right. Lakers and Nuggets, a rematch of the Western Conference Final. I saved this game for last because it was disappointing. Denver, in the second half, scored only 35 points. Those guys, Nikola Jokic and those guys only scoring 35 points. They just had a terrible half against the Lakers, uh, who scored 68 themselves. Not much to report from this one. Jared Dudley sat this one out with right calf soreness. I wish it was right wrist soreness after uh, finding out that he's releasing a book about the Lakers championship run. Or maybe he's left-handed like LeBron. I don't know. LeBron had a 27-point triple-double in this one. And speaking of LeBron, he was very vocal after the game when asked whether he supported an all-star game, which is happening in Atlanta in March. I talked about it yesterday yesterday. But now it's really happening. It's not official, official, but now it's really happening. It's shocking that the NBA is doing this. LeBron was disappointed. He said he's not in favor of it whatsoever, but that he would play. And so this game is going to happen no matter what. I'll get into it more today on the No Dunks full-length episode. This, This episode is just way too short to get into it. It is a little bit bonkers. We'll talk about it then. I will be back on Monday to give you the news as fast as I possibly can. Thanks so much for joining me.